Assalamu alaikum folks and welcome back to the channel. Islamic mortgages is the single topic that gets Muslim hearts racing when it comes to Islamic finance. And today we've got a good one for you. So make sure that you're ready for some serious cardio. Great. What are you doing? Cardio, Kabzi. Something you probably don't know anything about. Come on, Ibrahim, you can do this. Home purchase plan. <laughs> We're going to be reviewing StrideUp, a new home finance product that has just hit the market and is live now. With the addition of StrideUp, there are actually now six different options that you can go for if you are a Muslim looking to buy a house in a Sharia compliant way. So the market is heating up very nicely, but with great choice comes great confusion. And that's where this video comes in. In this video, we will be explaining how does StrideUp actually work? Is it Sharia compliant? How does it compare to the other alternatives out there? And when does it make sense for you to consider StrideUp as a viable option? As ever, please do remember that these videos are made for educational and entertainment purposes only. And if you are in any doubt whatsoever, you should consider talking to a financial advisor, a mortgage advisor, a life therapist, anyone other than just watching this video. And FYI, StrideUp have not seen or approved or sponsored this video, but they are a partner, just like all the other Islamic mortgage and home finance providers on our Islamic mortgage comparison tool. Before we dive in, I wanted to tell you about the single most mind exploding, incredible investing app Okay, perhaps I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's pretty cool. It's called IFG Wealth, and it will allow you to compare different investments, track your net worth, and see your insights that are tailored to your particular circumstances so that you can make adjustments to your portfolio as you go along. And also you can do things like calculate your zakat in a really granular way. You can get your Islamic will sorted within 20 minutes as well, using the same zakat data that you've already entered in. And coming soon, we'll have a detailed portfolio analysis for you that live updates as well. And you'll be able to access a range of different IFG funds, including things like real estate, venture capital, crypto, and many others. So make sure that you check it out, IFG Wealth. The link is in the description below. And let me know what you think. The StrideUp model is a home purchase plan model, the HPP model, a similar structure to Gatehouse and Arrayan. So in that sense, we are on very familiar grounds. For those who missed our reviews of those, here is a quick summary of how it all goes down. The idea is that you are entering into a relationship with a bank where the bank is your landlord for the portion of the property that it owns and you own the portion of the property that you paid the deposit for and over time you pay the bank a rent for the portion that it owns and you buy back from the bank the portion that it owns as well so in the end you end up owning a hundred percent of the property and the bank only at that point will it transfer over the legal title of the property to you and voila you are a home owner. Here's a diagram of how it works. So what happens is that the buyer is buying an equitable interest in the freehold and the buyer is getting a leasehold in the house because he is a tenant in the house and the bank is the one that holds the legal title over the house. This is basically legal structuring but what it means is that you are the home owner of the house in partnership with the bank and the bank will only ever really disappear from this picture when the home purchase plan term ends. And so as you can see, this is what happens at the end. At this point, the bank will now transfer over the ownership to you and you will be the legal owner of the house and the lease bit just disappears. So essentially what you're doing is you're entering into a rental agreement with the bank as landlord and you are entering into a purchase agreement with the bank that is selling you down its shares in the property. Right, so the key difference between that model and what StrideUp are doing is that StrideUp have this thing called the equity share. So in the typical model, a bank would own, let's say 80% of the house and sell that back to you. In this model, StrideUp will retain 20% of that 80% and only sell you down the 60% that typically would be sold down. That 20% is kept 
because Stride Up wants to share the risk with you. So what happens is, if you were to sell the house at a loss for whatever reason, then Stride Up would actually share in the loss with you in that particular circumstance. And if you sold the house at a profit, then Stride Up would actually gift you any of the profits that were made as well. So it's a win-win situation for you. What happens is at the end of the term, you have to either sell your house, and that way Stride Up will get paid, or you have to buy that 20% from Stride Up in bulk at the end. There is another way as well where you can make additional payments throughout your term and actually end up buying the 20% as a whole, just like you would in your usual Islamic mortgage as well. So this concept is a unique different thing that Stride Up have come up with, which I think is very interesting. This is how it looks diagrammatically. As you can see, you've got the buyout share. This is the bit that behaves like a usual Islamic mortgage, uh, the bit that you're buying back. Then you've got the equity share, that's 100,000. This is the bit that you can opt to also buy back using additional monthly payments, or you can opt to not buy it at all and just sell the house at the end of the, the term of the home purchase plan, or you could buy it in bulk at the end as well. So there's different options that you are um, able to use uh, to deal with that. Now, the precise reason why Stridup have done this, they say is because they want to really share the risk and reward with customers in a way that historically HPPs haven't done, which I think is pretty cool. And I think it benefits customers in two important ways. The two biggest complaints against the HPPs um, that Arayana and Gatehouse brought out have been that firstly, they don't actually share in the risk of loss with you. And secondly, that they become very much like debt-based instruments because you are locked in to buy the entire amount of the house back from the bank from day one. So it behaves very much like a debt instrument. However, with this twist on the HPP model, StrideUp are definitely sharing at least partially in the downside risk. They are sharing in the loss at least somewhat, which I think is great. And then secondly, they aren't saying that you have to buy the entire portion of the house from us as StrideUp. They're giving you a few different routes out. You can either buy it from us uh, from the start, you can buy it from us at the end, or you can sell the house and pay us off that way. So there are multiple different options to consider here. And because the HPP term is going to be relatively long term in any case, rather like you know your Islamic mortgage, that means that you have plenty of options to play with and to be able to come up with something that works for you. The other thing is that the Stride Up team is a fintech, right? So they're a lot more tech savvy. I know that they have a great tech team and that their platform is pretty slick and they are likely to be much, much better at the whole customer relationship side of things that, let's be honest, uh, the traditional banks aren't as good at. Um, of course, it's early days, so we don't have any hard data from customers just yet, but from my interactions with the platform and with the people, my sense is that it's going to be a lot more of a feel of a fintechy startup rather than dealing with an old-fashioned ogre. So that's the good side. Here are the few quibbles that I have. My key quibble, with Arayan and Gatehouse Bank was that they made you take out the insurance on the property and they didn't take their share in it. I mean, it's a very small quibble in the sense that it will cost 50 to 60 pounds a year for Arayan or Gatehouse or whichever HPP provider it is uh, to share in the insurance cost with you every single year. Stride Up have gone for the same route. They ask you to insure the property. That in and of itself is not problematic from a fiqhi perspective. And of course, we'll talk about the Sharia compliance very shortly. Stride Up are signed off on it. But if there was one thing that I think perhaps could be tweaked here, that is the thing that potentially could be tweaked. The other big quibble is about the price, but more on that later. Quibbles aside, Amana Advisors, headed up by Mufti Faraz Adam, has reviewed and approved the Stride Up model. And to me, to be honest, that is legitimacy enough that Stride Up is Sharia compliant. Mufti Faraz is someone that I deeply respect and value his judgment on, and that's that. But in any case, I have also, because I'm sad, read through all the different legal documents that the Stride Up 
home purchase plan package sends you and it differs very little from the Arrayan and Gatehouse model in substance. And as you all know, I was happy with the Gatehouse and Arrayan model anyway. And actually the changes that StrideUp makes are better from a Sharia compliance and risk sharing perspective. So from my own perspective, the StrideUp HPP model is very much Sharia compliant. If you compare the StrideUp model to the mainstream mortgage model, it's an absolute car crash from a pricing perspective because StrideUp charges 5.09% and then after the initial period 4.99%, so around 5%. Whereas in the mainstream world, you could get a mortgage as cheap as 1.5%, but certainly around the 2, 2.5% range very easily. But it's not all doom and gloom because with StrideUp, because they've got this 20% equity share, usually um, if a bank was going to be lending you 80% of the value of the house, StrideUp are now only lending you 60% of the value of the house, which means that you can actually access more finance. You can buy a bigger house. You can you know, overreach slightly compared to what you would be able to with a mainstream mortgage. So that's pretty cool. The other really obvious thing is that a mainstream mortgage is not Sharia compliant, whereas StrideUp is. So that has its perks as well. The closest competition with StrideUp, I think like for like, is Gatehouse. Arrayan is basically out of the home purchase plan market these days. It's not really doing any Islamic mortgages. Gatehouse is better on the rates at every different category. So if you are paying a 10% deposit, which is the lowest StrideUp do, then Gatehouse is better. And if you look at the 20, 30% mark as a deposit instead, then Gatehouse is still better. To be fair though, it's actually pretty close. And given that this is StrideUp's first foray into the market and it's much younger and smaller than someone like Gatehouse, actually the rates being pretty close is pretty impressive. And I would expect it to go down further over the coming years as it solidifies its position in the market. Right, now for a comparison with the other alternative finance providers out there. I think StrideUp does actually pretty well when you compare it to other alternative finance providers and there's two key reasons for it. The first is that it is a regulated entity and the second is that it has a credit line of around 280, 300 million pounds ready to deploy into home purchases. That means that there is no wait list, unlike the really promising but earlier stage companies in this space, such as Primary Finance and crowd to live And it also means that they can deploy throughout the year and they don't go off on a six month holiday like Halo Housing has to because it has a pot of money that it gets every year, it depletes it and then it goes away. With StrideUp, that doesn't happen. At least it hasn't happened yet. The other benefit is that StrideUp is a home purchase plan, so it's not really bothered about what home you go for or where that home is, as long as obviously it's in the country, which gives it a slight edge over companies like Wayhome, which do restrict which homes you go for and where those homes are. In terms of pricing, they're all pretty expensive relative to the mainstream and even compared to Islamic banks such as Gatehouse. Having said that, I do think it's worth shopping around when you are in the market to buy a house because these guys are doing regular deals and they're regularly switching around the rates so you could find yourself a bit of a bargain as well. From a purely fifty perspective, those who are more comfortable with a pure, pure shared ownership model, i.e. not the HPP model, even in the tweaked form, then of course going for something like primary finance or way home or crowd to live or halo housing would be better because these are much more on the shared ownership end of the spectrum rather than a regulated HPP product that StrideUp has in its offering. I think it would always make sense at this point if you are looking to buy a house to get in touch with StrideUp and get that decision in principle letter from them because if things don't work out with someone like Gatehouse which is marginally cheaper then at least you have another option there. And things can change as well because Gatehouse may have much more stringent requirements in terms of their credit checks and their backgrounds and the minimums and the maximums which means that StrideUp could actually be an alternative for those kind of circumstances. And also, because StrideUp is able to offer you more financing because of the equity share idea, that would mean that it would be more attractive than someone like Gatehouse 
in certain circumstances. For those of you who are in a hurry to buy a home as well and you're fast closing on a deal and it's going to go away if you take ages, then definitely Stride Up, I think, will be much quicker than someone like Gatehouse just because it's a young, agile startup and it's hungry and it wants to make its name in this space. Speaking frankly, I know for sure if I was going to be buying my next house now, I would get a decision in principle from Stride Up. I'd probably check out the Way Home website. I'd have a quick chat with all of the guys to see what their offering is. And if I got a better rate from any of them at that particular moment, and for some reason Gatehouse wasn't around or it wasn't giving me the best option, I would go for any of these alternative finance providers. Ultimately, for me in particular, it will come down to price. And as a Gatehouse and Arrayan customer, I suspect and I will be fine going with Gatehouse and Arrayan because I've already passed the checks. But for others who are in different circumstances and at different times of their life and looking to buy different kind of products, it really is worthwhile checking all the options out. So that's it for today, folks. Please do let us know in the comments below how you found this video. If you would like us to review other home finance products out there, we always love to hear from you and do share this with your friends and family and hit that like button as well. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.